We know the usual deal when it comes to WWE with John Cena. Here's basically how the story goes. They'll throw somebody up against Cena. They'll pretend like he has some obstacle or barrier that he has to overcome. All the while, John Cena himself is actually the barrier and the obstacle to overcome. They will try to tell you that you have this reason or that reason to not particularly like John Cena's opponent, yet all the while it's John Cena who does the things that are inherently unlikable on screen as a character, and as a result, he becomes the one that frankly acts more like the bully, more like the heel, and ends up being the one that's easier to dislike. So you go through the program, and at no point in time does anybody really get one over on John Cena for the most part. Even when somebody gets something on Cena, they always make sure as a company that Cena gets it right back. When you start getting to the big matches at the special events, the pay-per-views, and on the big shows, if somebody does happen to beat Cena more, 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 more often than not, it's always some fluke, it's always some bullshit, it's always some excuse. And then you know at some point in time, if that even does happen, that Cena's ultimately going to get it back. And not only is he going to get it back, he's going to get it back multiple times over. It's going to be reinforced. It is going to be <laughs> embedded into your mind through the relentless propaganda pounding by the WWE machine that Cena is the man. You can look back at the Bray Wyatt feud of 2014 as one example of this. Uh, you can look at the Rusev feud of 2015 as another example of this. It's an on and, and on and on and on type of ordeal when it comes to the Cena character and frankly has been for the past 10 damn years. And that's why so many hardcore adult wrestling fans get worn out from Cena and get tired of Cena and are frustrated with the Cena character and the WWE as a result because so often it feels like the company and the Cena character frankly is just wasting your time and for the most part they are they are wasting your time why sit there and get engaged in anything Cena does because you know 99.99% .99 of the time how it's gonna play out what each point in the story is going to be, even though there's not really much of a story there, and you ultimately know it's going to come down to the same old bullshit. Nothing was accomplished, nothing has changed, everything's still the same. LOL, Cena rules, hashtag Breakfast Club rules, bitches. And it's just the reality of WWE today. It is. And just because John Cena is the U.S. champion and not the world champion doesn't change that. And again, I'll point to the Rusev feud as a perfect example of this. And, you know, now we get to Money in the Bank this Sunday. And you have Kevin Owens and John Cena scoring off once again. And many of us were surprised, and I think pleasantly so, that Kevin Owens not only beat John Cena at Elimination Chamber, but beat him clean with no bullshit, no excuses, no cheating, no anything. It was just two guys went at it, and Kevin Owens was the better man. And unlike in the past, where a Cena would have come up with something, or the WWE would have come up with something, and gave you some type of bullshit, some type of excuse, some type of reason or justification, he was hurt, he didn't take him seriously enough, Owens did this or did that, it was just he got beat. And now we're starting to question, can Cena beat this guy? And the appeal is so much more, in my opinion, because of the fact that there is that question. But now we know we're ultimately getting to that critical point that is always the critical point in any John Cena story. And that is you get to the point now where Vince McMahon, John Cena, and the Titan Tower machine are just itching and chomping at the bit for Cena to get his win back. And I'm sorry, come Sunday at Money in the Bank, John Cena can't beat Kevin Owens. He just can't. It's just not good for any parties involved. Let's look at that first from a fan standpoint. You know, Cena's been pounded down our throats as basically the same exact fucking character for the past decade. And there is a diminishing return on that Cena character, even with him continuously being pounded as that prop by the WWE machine, because we know at the end of the day, ultimately, that so many things involving him are going to be a waste of time. And henceforth, as a result, we don't feel like we need to get that invested in it because we already know how this is going to play out and this is how it's going to finish. 
So seeing Owens be to seen it clean at Elimination Chamber gave us at least a little bit of a faint hope as fans, and especially as hardcore male adult wrestling fans, that, you know, we don't really know. We could be pleasantly surprised. You know, now all of a sudden, how much more intrigued are we by the thought of Kevin Owens versus John Cena again? Because Kevin Owens went over him the first time. It's good for us as fans. It gives us an idea or a hope, as faint as it might be, that Cena and the WWE and Vince McMahon are starting to see the error of their ways with the Cena character and understanding that he doesn't always have to be this fucking super demon god. That every once in a while, it's okay for him to show vulnerability. It's okay for him to have some weakness. Because, in fact, if anything... With a guy that's been there so long, he should now be crossing over to the point where we as fans, even if we're not huge fans of his and don't particularly like him, we at least respect him and respect him to a certain degree. And I don't know if that respect level is there because of the resentment towards the Cena character and the resentment towards Vince and the WWE for that way that Cena character has been featured for the past decade on television. So now, for us as fans, it's perhaps a way to sit there and get us to actually invest in the Cena character a little bit, to tolerate, if anything else, the Cena character a little bit. I'll point to a perfect example of this being Randy Orton. You know, there was a period of time where the hardcore fans loved Orton and hated Cena because in so many ways they foolishly felt that Orton was the anti-Cena, even though in many ways he ultimately was just Cena in a different packaging and in a different way. But then it got to the point where people started to wise up, I think, and realize just how bad Randy Orton was and how similar he was to John Cena. And it hurt his appeal and everything else, and people started to resent him a little bit. But now you look at Randy Orton, there's a bit more of a respect factor there. There's a bit more of an appeal to him there, even by the people that are bored to death by him, like me. There's a bit of an appeal there to him because he's not so invincible now. He's not that huge obstacle. When he goes into a program or a story or a feud with somebody, you don't necessarily know if he's going to win or not, and you want to see potentially what happens, unless, of course, he's feuding with somebody like Kane or The Big Show. You know, the best thing WWE ever did with Randy Orton, even though they featured him a lot in big spots, was they had him lose, and they didn't quite pound him down your throats that fucking much, or as much at least. It gave some appeal some life to the Randy Orton character, and it's something that it can do from a fan standpoint for John Cena. I look at this from the Kevin Owens character standpoint. Here's a guy that has come out of the gates blazing. Here's a guy that is gaining some traction. Here's a character that has some momentum. Here's a character that is getting some attention, that is getting some heat, that is getting some buzz. And at this point in time, it would be foolish for the WWE, both from their standpoint and Kevin Owens' standpoint, to sit there and have him just lose right away to John Cena. You had him beat Cena once. Having him sit there and now just job out to Cena doesn't really accomplish a whole lot to that Owens character. It doesn't accomplish anything for the WWE. At a point in time where they need to build up as many young new stars as possible, even though Owens isn't the youngest guy by comparison to like Rollins and Ambrose and Reigns and Wyatt, what have you, this is a new fresh face for the WWE audience. You need to do everything you can to vindicate and validate him and make sure that it's known that this guy is going to be a major player now and for many years to come. So to sit there and have him lose immediately after beating John Cena would negate so much of that progress that you could potentially already have in place. And now you just look at a guy like Kevin Owens, who's being viewed as this type of character, now he just loses to Cena. You know, again, it's, it's one of these things where it's just the same old shit. And now you lose a bit of that credibility for the Kevin Owens character, and fans are like, yeah, he could do this and he could do that, but at the end of the day, he can't beat this fucking monster. And how is that really beneficial to anybody? You also got to look at Owens, too. This is the type of guy that can work with different types of guys on both sides of the fence as a character. And you also got to look at it, too, from a Kevin Owens standpoint. Here's a guy that you can make money with in a feud with him against Cena now. And you could potentially make even more money with him feuding with Cena down the road if you have Kevin Owens go over in this feud. Because if you have Owens dominate, if you have Owens go over, there is the appeal factor there of people not knowing whether or not Cena can win or whether or not Cena is going to win. And as a result, it makes people more curious to see what actually happens. And then we look at this from the John Cena character standpoint. You know, this whole notion that they've got to protect the Cena character is absolutely, completely, totally ridiculous. 
you know, you'll hear some defenses of guys losing all the time, some legends, if you will, guys like uh, Chris Jericho. And people will say, well, it doesn't matter if Jericho wins or loses because he's Jericho. Now, sometimes I think that's true, but sometimes a guy occasionally needs to get over. He needs to win once in a while. But at the end of the day, he's still Jericho. It's like Flair for many years when he was jobbing in WCW and even when he was jobbing in WWE at certain times. He was still Ric Flair. He was still a legend. And from a WWE standpoint, Cena's been the top guy for a fucking decade. He's been pounded down people's throats so damn much. Is a loss really going to hurt him? Is a couple of losses really going to hurt him? Is a whole string of losses really going to hurt him that much? The answer is no. If he's as much of a legend as the WWE tries to sell you, as much as WWE tries to make you believe, then he would be able to overcome that. And in fact, he would come out the better end for it, and his character and the company and the people that he works with would be better off for it. And that's a simple fact. You think about it this way. If John Cena didn't sit there and win all the time, if John Cena actually had obstacles and barriers to overcome instead of being those obstacles and barriers himself, don't you think that would at least increase the appeal of the character just a little bit? Knowing if anything else, it gives the, the product some spontaneity because you don't know whether Cena is going to win and you don't know how things are going to play out. And hence, as a result, you don't sit there and feel like you're wasting your time. And again, from a Cena standpoint, he's at a point in time where he's that established guy. If he loses some matches to some at least decent players, it's not going to hurt him. And people can blame Vince, and people can blame the WWE, but at the end of the fucking day, this is Cena's call. If you're a top guy in that company, and Cena is the top guy in that company, you run shit. You call the fucking shots, and you ultimately determine whether or not you're going over or how business is ultimately going to play out. We sit there and talk about this shit with Hogan. We talk about it with Austin. We talk about it with Hall and Nash. We'll certainly talk about it with Bret Hart and especially Shawn Michaels. And it was all true. Well, that shit applies to Triple H, yes. But it most certainly applies to John Cena as well. John Cena needs to understand that him going over here accomplishes nothing. Him going over here is just more short-sighted bullshit that this company has fallen victim to so often in John Cena himself because of his own stupidity has fallen victim to over the past decade. And sometimes you get too involved in the bullshit and you get too much believing in this or that and too protective of yourself and your character to be able to see the bigger picture. But the simple fact of the matter is, from a John Cena character standpoint, the only good result that can come out of him feuding with Kevin Owens is him losing repeatedly. Because, again, it provides some vulnerability to the John Cena character. It's a potential attempt, at least, even though the company won't do it, and Cena doesn't want to seem to sign off on it, to do something different with his character, tell his story in a different way, come with him with a different approach. And now, again, if you have Kevin Owens actually go over on a John Cena and you have Owens go off and do other big things, you can always come back to that well with Kevin Owens and John Cena and make even more money. And that would be, to me, I would think, the philosophy that everybody involved with that company would want to take is how do we make money now and how do we make even more money later? Where's the appeal in this going forward if John Cena just goes over Kevin Owens now and then goes over him again? Why would we need to come back to that in six months, 12 months, two years from now when we've already seen how this play is out and we already know who's going to ultimately win at the end of the day? And then from a WWE standpoint, Having Cena go over isn't always the answer. Having to protect this character is freaking ridiculous. This belief that good always needs to conquer evil just isn't realistic. Good doesn't always conquer evil. More often than not, in fact, evil triumphs over good in real life. And that's a fact. So to sit there and say that this hero always has to go over and that the hero has to conquer the villain, even though your hero is really the villain and the villains are really the heroes, is absolutely completely rid ridiculous. It just shows how out of touch this company is. At some point in time, you would think as well, it would be foolish to put so many of your eggs in that John Cena basket like you have for so damn long. This is a guy that's been doing it a long time. This is a guy that's had his history of injuries. Who's to sit there and say one day that all of a sudden he doesn't start getting the Daniel Bryan condition or he doesn't start having an edge type of problem and he has to retire? Then what the fuck does the company do? With guys like Ambrose, Reigns, and Rollins already being established in that main event type of scene and other younger characters on the scene, why would you not take the time now to add 
to that stockpile with somebody like Kevin Owens, knowing that that's better for the company and that's better for your established top guys that you already have, the guys like the Cena's and the Randy Orton's and the Brock Lesnar's. Because when we look at the grand scheme of things, if a Kevin Owens can beat a John Cena again, something that very few people not named Brock Lesnar could ever do, even The Rock couldn't beat John Cena two times in a row. Now you're opening up the thought process for who can I send Kevin Owens at. I can send him at Dean Ambrose. I can send him at Rowan Reigns. I can send him at Randy Orton. I can send him at Brock Lesnar. And now all of a sudden I've got 12 to 24 months of big time marquee programming tied up in Kevin Owens because I sat there and had him beat John Cena again. There are so many positives to Kevin Owens winning on Sunday and so many negatives to John Cena winning on Sunday which is probably why the WWE will have John Cena win on Sunday. Now, I know in part that I'm saying this because I'm just frustrated with the Cena character and tired of the bullshit and tired of feeling like, as a fan, that my time is being wasted and that I don't particularly like the Cena character. I understand that. And I also understand that I'm an Owens fan, have been for a long time, and I want to see this guy be a star in the WWE and think he can be a star in the WWE. And I'm speaking from that standpoint as well. There's no question. But at the end of the day... I just can't really see where anybody involved benefits from John Cena winning Sunday at Money in the Bank. And to me, at the end of the day, I would think that that's what you want to look at big picture. Where is the benefit and who benefits, who benefits the most, and how many potential parties could benefit based off of what you do? Well, to me, there really is no benefit even short term to John Cena winning. It's just him going over another guy and then who the fuck is a credible challenger to him? But if Kevin Owens wins, and wins clean again, and decisive again, it benefits all parties involved. So for that reason, I think that the WWE has no choice. John Cena can't beat Kevin Owens on Sunday at Money in the Bank. Kevin Owens must go over, and he must go over clean again. 